So you could bounce. You could bounce six Satan. Oh, oh, it hurts, Ian. Yeah, it's I don't want to do that. Spamming a bad unit, but the repetition of that bad unit kind of makes them a little bit better. Did we just come up with something? Maybe. Stop the tape. (laughs) Stop Stop the the tape. tape. Stop the tape. Hey, everybody out there in YouTube land, Steve and Ian coming at you from the deck of Hyperspace Hobbies. We are here to talk a little bit about spam, our favorite salty protein coming right out of that can. Fry it up. Fry it up. Make a spam sandwich. Yeah. Spam and eggs. Eggs and spam. Spam and eggs. Spam, spam, spam and eggs. Spam and eggs. This is a touchy subject. And before we get into said touchy subject, uh, thank you so much for everyone out there in YouTube land that's been supporting us. We are the little channel that could. We're up to like 4,000 subs or just about now. Maybe just a little channel that is. The little channel that is. And uh, thank you so much for all of your support. Really appreciate all the comments and the likes and the shares. If you want to be here with us at Hyperspace Hobbies and continue the conversation about 40K, please consider subscribing to the channel. Spam. Yes. Oh, so salty. It's not really something that you and I do often. We don't, I don't see you rocking three Gladiator Lancers and three Gladiator Reapers. No. And you have that. I do. They're over there. Yeah, I do. I don't like to do it. Um, And part of that is through. Uh, there's a practical thing like if people that know me from play on tabletop know that like i my collection is vast that's one way to put it <laughs> yeah vast uh but i also really like to actually have chapters that are like painted to be the colors that they are right and so what i don't want to do is i don't want to buy three gladiator reapers and then put them all into one chapter mm-hmm. and then that's all it is, yeah, right? Yeah, lock them out of the other chapters because right. you want to... I want to play them as... You want to play it the way be. that they're supposed to be. So spam can come in many forms. So the first, like, let's just kind of define it, I guess. So uh, the first kind of spam would be like a type... It, it can be really any anything that is repeated over the course of your entire army yeah. is kind of like the umbrella uh, term for it. Um, and usually this comes in the, in spamming like a type of weapon yep. in the case of the winners of, uh, of Adepticon and how the Tau, Tau army had a ludicrous number of cyclic ion blasters in it. Um, and that was very effective for him, right? Uh, and then next, uh, it could be a type of unit, right? So like, let's all go back to like, you know, the Iron Storm days when you would look across the table and you'd see like triple Redemptor Dreadnoughts and mm-hmm. then you'd see another couple kinds of Dreadnoughts or you'd and then you'd see, see nothing but Impulsors. You'd see 11 Hive Tyrants. Oh yes, back before the Rule of Three came in too. And you would have crazy. like 11 Hive Tyrants. Flyrants, yeah. Yeah, or the, the, the list of like 12 Hellhounds that was at um, uh, LVO that one time. So really wow. And GW has done lots of things over the years to kind of, you know, start to like rope in how people played that. And the, the rule of three that we all kind of play under now, um, I think is a great way of doing that. Yeah, no, it helps mitigate some of the possibilities for spam. Yeah, it really does. So uh, it's not just copying, copy and pasting a, a unit and duplicating that throughout the list. It's not just a type of weapon. It could also be a type of defensive profile. Like, you know, your whole army has two up saves. Yeah, and again, there's some armies that can't not do that. Like Grey Knights, everything just has a two-up save besides Rhino and the Storm Raven. Storm Raven. Uh, yeah. Custodes, same problem. Yeah, right. Everything's yep. got a two-up. So if you don't come with a counter to two to army-wide two-up saves, you're going to fight that army, and and they're going to crush you. Yeah, you don't have real problems. Or like I'm saying, with, with playing demons, there's a lot of four-up invuln saves. Yeah. If all you bring is high AP. Those points are sort of wasted because you're only going to be shooting at invulnerable saves. Yeah, exactly. And right. so some armies kind of can't help it. If you're yeah. playing demons, you're going to have a lot of four-up invulnerable saves. Exactly. Now, a criticism of this style of play, because like let, let's hit the negatives first. And there are some positives and stuff like that that we can talk about. Um, uh, but a criticism of this style of play, like when I look at some lists that are like seemingly doing well in like tournament land right now. So uh, we saw a list that had like what two Grandmaster in, Dre- ne- in Dre- Nemesis Dread Knights, and then like three Nemesis Dread Knights, and then like triplicate uh, Land Raider Redeemers. Yep, and then triplicate and then, Tech Marines, and then triplicate Tech Marines, Brotherhood Tech Marines, or Hilarious. whatever they're called. Well, that's the whole list. That's, that's the problem. 
Yeah. Is that those things are really durable. Yeah. There's a lot of wounds and that yeah. all the Dread Knights have invuln saves and do yeah. some tricky stuff. They up they up and down. Ruthless, yeah. right? Like crazy. And so when you look at a list and you and you see that kind of thing like repeated over and over and over again, and, and you don't have a real answer for that, like you are in trouble. Yeah. Right? It and also so, shows a particular state of the game whenever one unit is repeated over and over and over and it's winning tournaments it usually means there might be uh an adjustment to that that needs to happen yeah games workshop does not usually allow things like that to carry on because i like the community doesn't love it because it it doesn't feel great right when when you look down and you're like ah you have three redeemers and three nemesis dread knights and then another three grand master nemesis dread knights yeah. and you know, when you have other options in your lists available to you, like, you know, uh, you could have put a squad of Terminators into one of those Land Raiders, but then you wouldn't be spamming this one defensive profile. If your opponent actually does have hard counters to the thing that you're playing or trying to spam, that's it. Like, yeah. like if the if the Nemesis Dread Knight guy with the Land Raiders comes up to a list and on the other end of that list is nothing but like, you know, melters that reroll hits and wounds and grab everywhere, right? Where your anti-vehicle, high AP, like, starts str Starts doing some damage early. Right. Without that list to really start compounding down on you. Exactly, right? Yeah. Or, you know, like, or uh, maybe some of the, some of the Thousand Suns lists right now bypass all the defensive ones and just go straight for, you know, mortal wounds. Yeah, and, right? uh, and a lot of the Thousand Suns stuff is spamming pretty hard right now. It totally is, A lot is, of yeah. Sorcerer, 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 and then triplicates of the Infernal Master, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. And then... Uh, Magnus, who you can't spam, but it's still sweet. Yep, Magnus, Araman, and then Rubrix. Right, yeah. I like people coming up with creative list ideas. And I like people... I like seeing people use you know, models that maybe haven't been used in a while. Like, you know, 10th edition is the first edition where, uh, like, a Land Raider Redeemer was competitively viable yeah. in some time, right? Yep. So and it's actually really strong. It's really strong. And it gets really, really strong when you play three of them with three tech marines. Yes, and thus here is the issue, right? And, and but conversely, so let's, let's, let's swing over to some of the positive sides because there's actually, there are some positive sides to playing lists that are, that are a little on the spammy side, right? So if you're in a tournament, and for those of us that maybe don't play tournaments, haven't experienced this yet, that's okay. But, you know, trust me when I say, if you are on your second or third day right of playing warhammer yeah i don't know if i would love a list that has all separate and different units i've played those lists and it is hard to get all those rules kind of straight and so if you want to keep playing at a high level of the game and, and you want to keep you know up with pace like playing on the clock honestly like if you have three of this and three of that and three of this well you only have to memorize three data sheets and you know how all that stuff works. You, ho you know how it all works, right? And so now you can concentrate on what your opponent is doing. And you can concentrate on, um, you know, how those two or three data sheets kind of work interwork with one another. And so while it might be annoying to play against, uh, it can actually be a little easier to play. And when you're, when, uh, like a Warhammer tournament, like we've we've both played them, like they're marathons, they're not sprints. Yeah, and a lot of the times um, you get burnt out. It of becomes course, yeah. like the first game you're su having tons of fun, second game, awesome, third game, it's great. And then it starts to become, oh, okay, I got to wake up tomorrow and I got to play three games. Yeah. All right, starting to wear on that's, you a little bit. That's a lot. Like I'm going, I got some tickets to the Tacoma Open um, and uh, the Tacoma Open is a three-day, eight-round tournament. So on round eight, is it going to feel like a fun game to play or is it going to feel a little bit like work? It, yeah. And spamming stuff does make that easier. It's undeniable. It does. it does, right? And so, you know what? If you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I've got a big tournament coming up, even like a five-rounder, like a three on one day, two on the other, even a five rounder, like these are long days. They're also very social days. So like if you're one of those people that's a little bit more on the introverted side, like they can be very draining. And 
if you have less things to make decisions with or about, feels great, mm -hmm. right? Um, also, too, like you said, some stuff just can't avoid it at all. Yeah, and you can spam in more than just repetition of a single unit, like you were saying. You can repeat a rule or a gun yeah. or an armor profile. There's yeah. lots of ways to kind of sneak in spam and get either defensive or offensive style of spamming a particular thing. Yeah. Like spamming a rule could be every time I charge, I do mortal wounds, like mm. the uh, Brutalis Dread, the Assault Marines, the Chaplain does it when he triggers on yeah. close combat, and all that stuff starts compounding these mortal wounds in yeah. a particular style. And that can be sort of a spam in a way, but it's sort of hidden under the guise of playing separate units. They all sort of do the same thing. Yeah. It's a bit of a controversial like subject because I know how it feels when you walk up to a, to a table and you look across the table and you see that the player that you're playing against has just spammed like what are what are probably going to be the best units in the codex. They have paid, it's not like they're spamming reavers from the Space Marine Codex and you have a problem with it. it. It's usually, oh, I'm spamming triplicate Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knights. I'm also spamming three Nemesis Dread Knights and then three Land Raider Redeemers. And that is going to be my bonkers list, right? Because those are the three best data sheets in the Codex. So that's what we're going to spam. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that, I think, is what actually gets people, like, kind of gets their spines up a little bit. Do you know what I mean? What about the opposite? What about spamming a bad unit, but the repetition of that bad unit kind of makes them a little bit better? Speaking socially, I, I think that I would find it an easier pill to swallow. Like, if let's say I spam Plague Bearers, and I just play six units of ten Plague Bearers. They're T5, two wound, five up and vulnerable save. I wouldn't say it's a bad unit, but it's definitely not as amazing unit as you could be playing. Of course, but and because there's so much of them now, yeah, this, now this, they become they, it flips yeah. from them being not so good, a single squad of them not so great, but all of a sudden six squads of them, and your army can't do the output for you to survive. Okay, hold on, I have an interesting question for you because the option that you just said there, I don't know if I would actually call that spam. So is and spam dependent on how good the unit is? Maybe. Or maybe what role it fits into because the 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 example that you just used was a battle line unit. So like, some units can kind of get can get under the radar of being a spammed unit. I feel like you also play you could also play that under the guise of it's a fluff army and then all the rest of your stuff could be yes. all Nurgle as well. That's so totally, that's so totally true. I think I would feel like you know, because there it doesn't it doesn't feel like you're trying to do something. Uh, if I walk up to a table and the guy's got six squads of orc boys, I'm never like, well, man, the spam on these orc boys is gonna be like it. I think I think maybe that where the feeling get feelings get bad is definitely dependent on how good that unit is. Okay, I think that's really where where it comes All right. down to. You circle around to it. I I would have to agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. If it is the best thing in the codex and you take three of them, that's spam. Yeah. Good old fashioned spam. But if it's crud and spamming it makes it really good. Then it's not as it's not as bad. No. It doesn't as bad. feel as bad. That okay. Okay, well, so I you love the diversity in lists for the I most love part. diversity in lists, yeah. It's very rare unless a unit is so good and it, it fills such an important role, it's very rare when you see three of them. In my lists? Yeah. Oh, almost never. Yeah. yeah. Even if they're really good, I will usually only play one or two of them tops. Right. Right. Very rarely do I I really triple down. Like, it's, yeah, it's so, actually, I like, I don't think of a list, I cannot think of a list in 10th edition that I have played that has three of something. I think you played three scouts, three squads of scouts. Oh yeah, back when they were back when they were fifty five fifty five points. points. Yeah, yeah. I play. I tested a list out that had three of them for a little while. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, again though, I don't know if I'd call that spam. We're, That's we're, only a hundred and six. But this is a good conversation to have because like, what actually is spam? 
Yeah, I profile don't, profile dependent. Is it's what prof- spam it is. is. About. It's really profile dependent, and how strong and how how hard those things hit really really matters. But I mean, in that same regard, how strong something is, how durable something is, is all just how it affects the game. Yeah. And the, and fifty five point scouts affect the game in a huge way. Yeah. So I think their special ability is super good. Now, if you played three squads of scouts and then you played other units that went up and down. Calidus Assassin could be another example. Yep, and you mentioned Shrike. Uh, Shrike and Shrike any too. unit. <laughs> if you did all of that, would that become spam? Even then, I'm not sure because it's a rule that doesn't fully affect... It doesn't kick my butt Yeah. and force me to make bad say like bad yeah. roles and yeah. bad decisions it essentially just forces me to try to screen you out yeah. in a weird way i think it really does i think it is really dependent on how durable the unit is and how forceful it can be on the tabletop right um and maybe if the rule got so annoying like if literally everything in your army like uppy downy and have that not actually be your detachment rule like hypercrypt for example yeah right like but like actually if your whole army somehow had like if you were able to get as many because you could do it with the with the raven guard detachment you could have three units of scouts it's callous assassin shrike and five things could blip up and down which is way more than hypercrypt could ever do yeah hypercrypt right? can do four it can do four yeah. but then you can spend one cp and you can bring out two phobos units too mm-hmm. so you could actually it if you really tried i bet you could even i bet you there's something that does even more so you can like blip seven and like redeploy your entire Did we army. just come up with something maybe stop the tape stop, <laughs> stop the, the tape. tape stop the tape do you think that spam is healthy for the game no but also kind of yes okay the reason why i would say spam is not good for the game is because it can just make for bad feels on the tabletop and i want to try to play games competitively with uh, whatever stuff I want to play. Mm. But what it helps to do is highlight particular units that are maybe too good in the game already and need to be addressed. Uh-huh. So if Games Workshop sees a list and there's all these spammed units, they can go, okay, maybe we have to take a closer look at that. Yeah. So not only is it, anno- it can be annoying on the tabletop, not all the time, but sometimes it can be really annoying on the tabletop. Yeah. It's also a waving red flag that maybe this needs to be looked at again. The the jig is up yeah. as soon as you start doing that stuff. Yeah, like there's a list. So the Wet Coast GT is coming up soon. I don't know whose list it is, but it is absolutely running six Satan. It's three Transcendent Satan and then the, the Dragon one. And Void then Dragon. Void Dragon. And then the Knight one. Nightbringer. And then the yeah. Deceiver. And then the Deceiver one, yeah. So there are... Like six to ten, like I would be so beside myself on what I was really, what I, and I'm pretty sure it's hypercrypt too, so they can all bounce in and out. Well, the transcendence can already do that. Yeah, so then they can all bounce, and then the other ones can bounce too. I'm pretty sure. So you could bounce, you could bounce six satan. Oh, oh, it hurts, Ian. Yeah, that's, I don't want to do that. That's like, rough. That's rough. So like. That's I like I could totally see them making a transcendent satan just an epic hero so you can only have one of them. Yep. I could totally see them upping the price tag on all of them because of things like that. Yeah. The satan are waving the red flags. Yeah. Right. But they're they're the thing is a lot of people are just playing the Void Dragon and the Nightbringer. Yeah. Those which, are both good. Which like you're only playing two Satan shards. I see a lot of lists with two Satan shards. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't really fall into spam. If you're just playing two. No, but I but I don't see any lists that have less than two. Like they're one of those things that's oh, like if you're playing Necrons, like you you gotta play at least two Satan. Yeah. Because they're so good for like they're so efficient for there's, what they do. There's some Canoptic court, court lists that can get away with not doing it. Oh, right, because you but 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 the reason that they can get away with not doing it is because they also have 18 raids all with feel no pain, which is brutal spam, ruthless spam. Right. So like it, they can get away with not spamming or, or bringing these things only because they're spamming something that is already wildly durable. I wonder how many times we've said spam. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And please give us a like and a subscribe. See you later from Hyperspace Hobbies. Bye.